databases that we might use to generate utility rates for the stormwater program. So we're going to put that presentation aside and do it at another day. Sure. Is all right with y'all? I'm sure it's all right. And then we're going to go ahead and proceed with this one, which is the CIP program. This one's a little bit more time sensitive. Uh, so, last couple of years we haven't sold any of the remaining authorization on the GO bonds due to the economic circumstances. We're in a little bit different position, we believe, this year. So, the question that's going to be uh, asked at the end is do you want to go ahead and attempt to proceed with the bond sale okay. this spring, possibly next year as well, uh, to deal with some of the pending projects that are out there? Recap, first of all, the 2003 authorization, this is the vote that was held uh, in 2003 on Propositions 1, 2, and 3, as shown up there on the slide. You see Proposition 1 was the biggest one, primarily for streets. We had two smaller ones, one for the jail, which has been sold and completed, and 3, which was the public training, uh, public safety training facility off of Keeley that has not been sold see as uh, we get along as one of the proposed projects for this next bond sale. Total authorization 68.7 million. We've got about 23.47 of that authorization done or uh, remaining, uh, which means we've issued the rest. Uh, that 23.47 is made up of the 1.34 for the training center and the rest is all streets. This is a uh, recap of the authority used and what it's been used for. You can see the issuances were done in 2004 through 2009. They were suspended in 2010 and 2011 due to the circumstances, so we haven't issued anything since 2009. See the wide variety of street projects on there. You can see the jail down here. Various subdivisions like Westwood Estates, Westlake Park, Serendipity, those have all been largely completed. Westwood Estates is the second phase that's coming up. This is a project recap. These are the projects that were actually advertised to voters as to ones that we were basing the bond program on. These are the ones that we intended to attempt to get done. Uh, you can see the status of these. Valley Ridge is done from Garden Ridge to West City Limits. Uh, Westlake Park is completed. Uh, Serendipity Village is completed. Uh, from in North Old Town, we designed Richard Street and suspended it, moved the money to Purnell, which is under construction today. As you can see, outside a couple blocks in the south. Got about $2 million unsold in, in that line item. Various things have been done under miscellaneous economic development, uh, multi Development Streets, uh, Valley Ridge from 121 to Railroad Park, uh, Wind Haven out on the east side, uh, out by uh, Austin Ranch and Bright, uh, those are all complete. Uh, Westwood Estates is complete in Section 2. Uh, Section 1 is going to be bid in just a couple months here, uh, so you'll see that coming to you on the agenda fairly quickly. We added Bel Air Heights in 2011, and uh, I believe that's a I-35 bridges, we haven't done anything on that. Uh, had a original line item of six million of authorization, so that's kind of out there for future consideration. Fox Avenue was completed, but we didn't have to do anything on this one in terms of financing it herself. This was under the uh, DCTA, um, not your name of the program, but uh, whatever it's called. What, yeah, their version of uh, ELO. ELO. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Valley 2, uh, we had an original line of about $4 million. We did a lot of rehab in 2003, and so we kind of set that one aside. Maybe something we revisit, because 2003 is quite a while ago now. Almost 10 years, believe it or not. <laughs> Continue to take a look at those uh, older subdivisions on all the uh, year-to-year basis. This is Public Safety Training Center. This is off of Keeley. It's in addition to the existing training tower. Actually, it's in, it's in addition to the existing uh, training facility over there, of which the training tower is part. Uh, 
primarily uh, additional classrooms, some uh, shower space, some dirt, dirty shower uh, facilities for firefighters. Uh, there's not a whole lot of money there, but uh, something that they've been planning on for some time. Uh, Southwest Louisville, Sphinx Road, Valley Parkway, those were all completed, but again, we uh, managed to avoid having to do anything ourselves because we worked with the county and the owners to put those roads in at their cost. East Old Town, uh, this is a line of about five and a half million dollars for the triangle area bounded by uh, 121 and uh, Keeley and uh, roughly probably Purnell Street. Uh, most of the streets there are actually in pretty good condition due to the CDBG expenditures. And there's never really been a defined scope for what we would do in East Old Town. It was just kind of a line set aside for that area. South Old Town, somewhat similar, very small line. Uh, again, no real defined scope for exactly where or what would be done. And Corporate Drive, uh, the Waters Ridge for Railroad Street piece, that little connection is in design. Uh, we also got a secondary uh, road, uh, rail crossing in design at, further to the east at Windhaven, where it crosses the uh, railroad over by Castle Hills. These are actually going to wind up being funded by the regional toll revenue funds that have been allocated to us, although we'll have to provide a match in combination with Denton County. It's a 20% match. Denton County will do 10, we'll do 10. Miscellaneous streets, variety of here, uh, railroad streets under construction. We had some delays there because of contractor problems. Uh, Valley Ridge, Mill to College. That one's in design and in the process of right of way acquisition. This would be the connection between Mill Street and College in the vicinity of the uh, landfill that would basically connect uh, Valley Ridge all the way from the Flower Mound City, Louisville limits on the west to uh, Railroad Park and uh, 34th. Uh, that's going to be a joint project also with. Uh, Denton County, but uh, we'll need a match for construction. Another part that we may use some of this money for would be for Plaza Elementary construction in the Plaza project. So, what are our immediate needs? Um, really, these three projects would be the ones that we would be focused on because this one's in design, in right away acquisition, um, very close to being ready to go out to bid on, close to being within a year. Uh, we need about $7 million for our share of that. The county will provide the remaining funds. Uh, but we'll need about $7 million for our piece. How much is that Five, I believe. Uh, this is the training center aforementioned. And 407 is the aesthetic and uh, streetscaping improvements that we recently discussed in the uh, workshop. Uh, that is, one against the state. still? For them to build the 407 structure and all to accommodate the full build out of the, the whatever, whatever they build out with 35. 35. Correct. Correct. Yeah. They haven't talked about scaling that back yet. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. Yeah. Uh, 1.6 is a 35 uh, intersection of 407. Right? So, so I think it's, it's yeah. pretty, that's what I like about you. You're a half full kind of guy. Yeah. So that comes to 9.94 million. So what's our bond capacity, which, again, in the last couple of years, we've been a little uh, shy about issuing bonds because of the effect on uh, the debt rate in, in an environment where taxable assessed value might be uh, going down, which, in fact, it did. So it's a good thing that we uh, held off. We managed to basically uh, absorb that decrease without any real substantive effects on the tax rates for citizens or on operations. So uh, it's one of those things you do. You look at the environment, you see whether or not you think you can uh, absorb the, the increase in debt service according to your taxable assessed value of growth. If you can't, you have to deal with the debt rate increase or make a decision to not issue for that. So this is based on uh, First Southwest. This is our financial advisor that then has the analysis based on zero growth assuming zero growth in AD compared to 2010-11 budget we're in right now. 
Uh, they think we could issue 6.03 million in 2012 and 4.02 in 2013. And that gets you to 10.05. So what's the risk? Well, uh, your taxable assessed value could actually decrease. I'm not going to guarantee you that it's going to be flat. Flat seems like a relatively conservative scenario, but uh, I can't predict uh, the economy and I can't predict uh, the appraisal district. Maybe Rudy can. <laughs> I can't. The word now is flat to down. Yeah. Even with new construction. Okay. Because every time Melissa, when a apartment comes online, another one is losing tenants. The capacity is yeah, so getting bigger, bigger and goes down there. Right. And that's certainly a, a, a possibility. So again, I have to mention that as a risk. If it goes down, then uh, basically and if, if you issue the debt based on it being the same, you wind up having to absorb that increased debt through a change in your debt rate, an upward change in your debt rate. Uh, it's that or you could uh, possibly uh, increase the debt rate uh, or transfer funds, that should be or right there, it says on, but should be or transfer funds from general serve, or general fund reserve to the debt service fund to offset. Uh, that would give you a little flexibility to deal with that change in the short run. You don't want to do that on any kind of long term basis, but it could give you some flexibility in the short run. Or, we, and this is what we've actually done the last two years, we've had to evaluate our debt service fund reserves and drawn them down to offset those changes in the debt rate. We've done that each of the last two years. We're at the point now where we don't think that there's a whole lot of room in this option to play with that. Um, especially if you issue some more debt, that fund reserve will go up and there's not going to be excess reserves there for uh, much of a uh, drawdown. So your probable, most likely options are either just plain old increased debt rate or transfer <coughs> from general fund reserves. What we don't want you to do is to <coughs> keep the debt rate the same and balance it off the operating rate. Because then I have to cut a whole lot of stuff out of the operating budget. Other projects. Uh, <laughs> That's throwing me off. I'm sorry. Good time. This is supposed to be on other options. Um, you could advance these funds instead of issuing debt. You could advance these funds through the use of general fund reserves and use reimbursement solution resolutions to pay yourself back in the future through future debt issuance. We've done this in the past as well. The most recent example was Railroad Street didn't have the bond capacity at the time. We financed it out of general fund, passed a reimbursement resolution, and then paid ourselves back a couple years later through the debt issuance. So it's kind of a way of balancing the cash flow and project need uh, over a period of a couple years. The problem with this is that you've got to make that repayment within, I think it's two, or is it three? It's two. Two years of the initial expenditure. So if you don't make yourself a repayment within that time frame, you're out of luck and your general fund reserves are capped. Yeah. So, so you, do you have to make it all within two years or do you have to pick it to uh, You have to make it all. What could jeopardize that repayment? Not being able to issue, not being able to issue the debt. Yeah. Continued deterioration in your tax base. Where you don't feel comfortable and you should have to repay yourself. Uh, of course, uh, along with that, you have to have the ability to do it out of the general funds reserves in the first place. So here's what your ending fiscal year 10 and 11 general fund reserves look like. This is unaudited, but getting pretty close to being audited. Uh, 20.115 million. So you've got some capacity. Oh, that was done. Yeah, 
that's the other obvious purpose for these funds is for things that you have to do, like the dog park, which was unfunded in any other manner. What did I say? Oh, I meant animal shelter. Well, and that's what I was thinking of because I didn't think when we took when we took out five million dollars out of out of reserve to pay for the animal adoption. Yes, you did. But I didn't think at the time we had twenty-five million. Well, you might not have. That was a couple years ago. Twenty-two million. So in other words, we increased. If I'm going to say this, in the last couple of years we increased. We increased. Our reserve built on that three million. You built from starting to look at that. Yes. Well, if some other people, we hadn't taken the five out for the dog, we'd have about 28 million. No, you'd have about 25. Yeah, if you didn't spend five, then you'd have five more to spend. 20 plus five. So that's uh, the situation. Uh, but uh, we would have had, you know, we would have had 28 because we had 23 in there. Uh, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> we, we've talked about some other capital project intensive plans, especially today, the park plan. And I wanted to give you some feel for where we're at on the 4B fund, because that's a source of funding for the park associated capital projects. The, uh, the problem with that plan is going to be financing, quite obviously. And it may wind up being that your only option is to uh, ask the voters if they're willing to uh, move forward with that project on the basis of debt financing. But for now, what could you do out of 4B fund? Uh, this shows your revenues the past couple of years. We've actually got pretty stable revenues despite the economic circumstances. We budgeted a little bit of an uh, in 2012 based on what we got uh, last year. Revenues are primarily the sales tax, but then we also throw in some pool facility revenues. How oh, the sales tax? Are, are the adjustments that are made down the road, I don't know if they're bigger or are they just the same they're happening more frequently? Were they adjust previous payments that were made? Were they Were the controller yeah. finds errors? Yeah, there's a lot more of those than there used to be. Okay. And they're beginning to be a big problem. Yeah. Because big problem. here's the rule. If the comptroller makes a mistake and it winds up hurting you, you have to pay some money back because it came to you in error. You just pay it back. Right. You've yeah. already spent it in most They've cases. Already, but then well, you have, how, how much time is there to pay it? Uh, they can go back on the five years. I mean, but you have to pay it pretty quick. Cause, and if it's under a certain amount, they just take it out of your next they, payment? Well, what they did for me, all the cities with the total amount. Right. Yeah. They just offset your negotiate. revenue unless you want to come up with the money yourself. But I mean, if it was more than what you got, could, would they take all of your money? They yeah. would. Okay. They went back and negotiated with a couple of the cities. Okay. Now, of course, you could be on the good side of that, too. <laughs> it doesn't have to be bad. You, you might get some revenue that belonged to some local city. Yeah, yeah, yeah really. That's what happened with, with Grand Prairie. Oh, yeah. It had reversed. They got all that money from all yeah. the other cities. Yeah. Of course, they didn't get Here's your uh, operating. Wait, 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 wait. Go back one. You know, since we had the, probably two, since we had the park map thing, like, you know, I used to talk about cities are starting to increase their, uh, their fees for revenue to help support. And I think we're doing this, but I was thinking that. Do we are we looking at our pools and facility revenues to try to help do that or not? I was thinking we did on the pool. We did. Uh, we switched we over. Actually, when we price went up, when we switched over. We did the pool we rates. We actually lowered it. Y'all we were very uh, hesitant to charge what it cost. Yep. Could we possibly y'all? Let me ask this. The council. Y'all, y'all. The council at the time. Let me ask this. Would the council be interested? And having Wins. staff, would, 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 would council be interested in having staff put together some information 
to see what an increase in some uh, fees for those type of services, how that would benefit us in providing newer, better services, additional services. It won't really do that. It, it would help offset existing operating expenses. Well, it's going to have to some because if we're if we're collecting ten dollars now, it's costing us twenty. Then we're having a supplement, right? Always oh, supplement. We're supplement. But if we collect twenty and it's costing us twenty, we don't have to supplement anymore. Supplement anymore, so we still got that ten dollars. Assume you yeah, keep it. That's what I'm saying. The general fund, the tendency is to not do that. But you're going to want to do that. Fine. I'm just trying to figure out a way to. You saw the need that we're going to have for the stuff. Would y'all want to look at that? I think we need to look at it to be competitive on the on the charge. Just to see, and I'm not saying we do it. Just have them get some information together and see well, what. It is. Worst case scenario, residents know what added value they're getting. Yeah, you can always look at pool rates. I, I, I would say the same thing for everything. It's not the directs and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And we do actually look at that fairly frequently. But also, budget, but also, you know, is it something that the city should pay for? You know, we're not going to start charging for something to go to a free park, but it costs yeah. us money to maintain yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Something that, that is something that cities do. Yeah. I'd like to look at that. There is a policy question there as to whether or not you charge on a user fee basis some portion of the cost of running a facility. Some places we do it, some places we do it partially, some places we don't do it at all. Right. I'd, I'd like to look at what it would, you know, what it would cost in order to have those revenues cover expenses, but I'd also like to look at what um, other cities are charging yes. for similar services so that we can find out what the market will bear. Well, well the reason I asked if you want to do it, if you want to do it, it's fine. But what I heard the gentleman, I asked him if they had a fall off in their participation in the city services. And he said no. In fact, it actually increased, even with the new increasing in rates, because they were able to provide them with better facilities and better things to service them with. So if it's if, if the people are willing to do it to get better stuff, that's what I'm saying. I want to say that the conversation came up in, in the context of building new facilities, didn't we? We did, yeah. And we'll like that. It's one thing to build a new facility and charge something more for it. It's a little bit different than the other existing facility. Oh, yes. Yeah. And I certainly understand that. But I, and I'm not saying we do it first, but I'm saying you can do that in conjunction with it. If you're going to build a new facility, at least then you know you don't have that $10 that you got to work, continue to supplement your older facility with. Well, it's it's going to be 20 more than that. Well, whatever, whatever I was just using. It, it's the, the fare box doesn't pay the way. Exactly. So anyhow, there's the revenues. Here's the operating expenditures that are in the 4B fund for running uh, the railroad park and the pools and a portion of the library. Uh, you can see it's a uh, really relatively smaller portion of the overall budget. We did move it up in 2012 to provide for cost of the three additional maintenance workers and electricity at Railroad Park. So what's the rest of it for? Uh, here's your summary revenues, expenditures, what's left for debt service, and your debt service is going to eat most of the rest of that up. Uh, the debt history is 21.2 in 2004 for the library expansion of pools, land for Railroad Park, and design of skate park, and then the rest of it in eight 2017 18.18 for the railroad park construction. And you can see each issuance here has a certain annual payment. At some point, when we wanted, if we wanted to uh, go into debt to, that would be paid for by 4B, I heard you say something a while ago it has to have a separate election. Public hearing. If you, if, you want public to go, yeah. if you want to have a new project, you mean? Yes. Yeah, if, you, if you want to have a new project, you have to have public hearings on that project. But not another, not an election. No. no. Okay. No. It's just how to spend the money. Yes. Okay. It's back to the corporation. Yeah. So here's the, uh, oh, that's what it was. the debt service on those issuances since 2009. See, we're, you know, we're still up in the 2.9 range. 
got some potential in the 2004 issue uh, coming up here to uh, generate some savings, which we're going to be pursuing with First Southwest. That will help. But today's picture, when you add the debt service in over here, you can see that you don't have a whole lot left in terms of current revenue balance. Got a variety of transfers. I'm not going to belabor these. Once you do the transfers in the budget this year, again, you just have an even lower current balance. So really, you don't have much room to uh, add any debt service to that based on our, our current structure and current revenue uh, numbers. Um, this shows you whoops, the uh, operating reserve and undesignated reserve in the fund. And right now, we're at about $6 million that's budgeted. You'll see an audit number here in the next month or so when this auditor get done. Probably won't be substantially different from that. Maybe a little bit higher. Uh, but that's six million dollars that you could use for projects. Uh, but that's only six million dollars. And I think the number was one hundred and thirty or whatever it was. Can we use any of the debt? I don't think this will You could. You could. You could use that when the, the bonds become callable. You can actually whatever resources you had. You can, you can, can't pay any debts on earlier to save some interest? You can the loan. Oh, okay. You can get rid of our debt. You can defease debt, and in accordance with whatever those bond covenants and restrictions say when the bonds are eligible to be defeated. I would fees. love to see those options in your reports. Thank okay. you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> um, so, um, again, not to take too much here other than we don't see it changing substantially. And so your, your options there are somewhat limited until your revenues in the 4D, and your sales tax revenues primarily start to build back up. When does the uh, sales tax, when does the extra quarter percent start? Not that it comes when it starts. For the fire and, and lease, yeah. it's already started, I believe, January. It is. Well, you start that first full quarter. Okay, okay, that's right. You get our first check in June, so it starts at April 1. Okay. When do uh, businesses start charging the union a quarter percent? April 1st? Yeah. 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 You know what's amazing is how many businesses. They're not the same power What's amazing to me is how many businesses are still only charging eight cents right now. So uh, the, the 
decision from here is uh, whether you want to authorize staff to work with First Southwest bond issuance for 2012. This would happen sometime probably in May. Probably not earlier than May, possibly June, June. So always contingent on the conditions in the market. The market changed substantially. Maybe when it would sell. Would it sell? Yeah, no, it, would it be May when you would sell bonds? Yes. And there's $6 million in reserves. You have $20 million in reserves. The, the 6 was a 4 feet. Oh. Well, we do have that advanced refunding you know, option, and it would make sense to save money to do an advanced refunding and, and the new money yeah, at the same, same time. time. I don't remember if 
Neil asked me about it, or TJ, or maybe it was even Leroy, but you know, there's the question about what you use bond funds for in the Old Town area, and uh, I do have some some information on that that you can take with you. Um, yeah, the, ro the roads, that stuff was, I think, on my, my request, just to, to kind of get us an idea of what, what's out there. Somewhat dated. Some of those those ratings come from as far back as 2004 or five. But it gives you some feel as to the that that right hand column, that PCI column, is a pavement condition index that tells you what the general condition of the roadway is, or for that segment of the road. And 100 is perfect, and one is like not even a road. A trail, a trail, or a pathway. So, give you some fields of condition. The second is a map that shows you kind of an inventory and kind of a general old town area of what kind of facilities you have out there, whether these are asphalt roads with drainage, asphalt roads with bar drainage, concrete roads with curb and gutter and storm sewer, etc. So, it kind of tells you what's out there, and as you can see from the map, it's a a pretty good mix. Um, the issue, of course, in Old Town has always been if you're going to do something on a given street, what exactly is it going to be? Because we were dealing with very small rights of way, usually 40 feet or less in right of way, and you can't build a 38 foot typical city street back to curb, back to back, and a 40 foot right of way, and have room for sidewalks or Utilities. And that's the issue that we dealt with on Richland Street several years ago when we attempted to uh, put in a, a standard city street. We did modify the right way, we did modify the design in that case, and we shrunk down the parkway to within the existing right of ways. And we basically wound up with the curbs, with the streets right next to the curbs, and a 38 foot street. The problem with that is that you still need room for power poles and any kind of appurtenances that utilities have, and so we can't put those in the middle of the sidewalk for obvious reasons. And so we needed a five-foot easement, and some property owners were willing to, to do that, and other property owners weren't. And so that, that project kind of uh, has been well, put on the shelf for that. Well, some of them not only did they not want to get an easement, they didn't want to do the period. After they leave the yard, went push it. Right. That's, so that's kind of the common issue, common denominator uh, anywhere on the substandard uh, Old Town streets is exactly what is it that you want to spend funds on? What is the scope of the project? Uh, do you just basically put back what's there? Do you improve the standard? Do you improve the, the current design characteristics? Uh, there are other curb or there are other asphalt streets with bar drainage in the city that function perfectly fine. It's, it's something of an aesthetic question, I suppose, more than anything else. Uh, there are some parking implications. Uh, the wider the street is, the more street, the more cars you can put on a, uh, a parking lane. But uh, that's always the question: is what do you put on the ground? How much right of way to function with it. So uh, that's one of those future things that's out there in terms of capital improvement demands. Most of the other major subdivisions, as you can see from this recap, we pretty much got them taken care of. Uh, Westlake Park, Serendipity Hill, and Westwood 1 and 2. Uh, and you know what's amazing? Garden Ridge Estates. You know what's amazing? Uh, Mr. Pack, as Mr. Parrish told me. Those, those additions where we've gone in, like Westwood too and stuff, and redone those streets, those houses in there have just popped up 
in people taking more pride of their ownership. They're keeping their houses up better. They are, okay, it looks like a, a new neighborhood, not a new built neighborhood, but it looks like a totally different neighborhood to the plus side. And it's amazing to see how just the city going in there and re, redoing those streets, which how were those streets 50 years? Yeah, 50-year-old streets, like which were in need of repair stuff. Then now what the citizens have gone in on their own, the private sector has gone in on their own now and started making improvements to their houses, which is, to me, what uh, it's all about. Well, that's basically it. That's all I have. Any questions? Maybe just back to you as early as possible. We don't get the wrap up session schedule for the last meeting of the regular agenda, regular council meeting of what you want us to do. Uh, okay, so that's it. That's the wrap up. That's it. That's it. Okay. When you all want to do the wrap up. Okay, so, I, so what I'm saying is, what I'm here to say is, Maybe a four o'clock start workshop session, uh, day of a council meeting, or a Saturday morning. All right. Two options. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Or out for me. Oh, oh, okay. What? I'm sorry. Is it the Saturdays at the 18th and the 25th are out for me. My daughter's getting married on the 18th. Wow, good job. Yes. That might be a good one. Stay guard, <laughs> stay guard <laughs> weekend for me on the 20th. Get your plane on this. What did you say, Randy? Uh, Day of council meeting. Day of council meeting. Four o'clock, everybody can do that. Listen, this is easy. Whatever works out. Everybody does. Yeah. Work well. We can do I'm two of them. Okay. Four o'clock. Okay. Four hours. All right. Just schedule that. Okay. Probably sooner the later better. so that we don't have to the, spend uh, as much time on meeting. The next meeting after Monday. Good. Good. Be, uh, uh, so we don't have to so worry about as so much about break yet. Okay. Sounds great. Anything else? Anybody got anything else? Look at there. Hey, where is it? Is that Mo's sitting there? I don't know. I don't know. You have one. I've got Mo's sitting there. You got one if you need it. You made a motion? Mo. TJ. TJ made a motion. Second. 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 Yes. But no, it's been all the time. It was a great oh, okay. treat. I certainly appreciate all your help. Uh,